Hi everyone, Jen Roque here at Stamp Camp with Jen.com. I am an independent demonstrator in Summerfield, Florida. And today I have this adorable double slider card using the Zany Zebra stamp set that's retiring. Isn't that so cute? I love it so much. So we made this at Stamp Camp this past month in April 2021. Um, this card was inspired by some double slider cards that I saw from Don Griffith. Um, if you're watching this from my Stamp Camp group, I've included the link for her cards uh, as well in my little PDF tutorial that I sent you. Um, so you can see she had like three different versions that she came up with. But I really wanted to show off these Zany Zebras. These are one of my favorite stamp sets. Um, and it is retiring as of May 3rd. May 3rd will be the last day you can order it. May 4th, when the new catalog comes out, you will not be able to order it. Um, or while supplies last, if it sells out um, before then. Okay, so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to put this together. It's really not that complicated. It looks really complicated, but once you have the basic mechanics down, you'll be able to whip these up in no time, okay? So... For our card kit, I'm using uh, Bermuda Bay, which is the darker color, and Coastal Cabana. So for Bermuda Bay, we're going to cut four and a quarter by 11, and I've scored it at the five and a half inch mark, okay? And then we also have a Bermuda Bay piece that is two and a quarter by three and a half. And then Coastal Cabana, you're going to cut down two pieces that are three and a quarter by four and a half. So you have two pieces of that. And then two little strips that are one inch by two inches. Okay. And then basic white, you're going to need two pieces that are cut to three inches by, oops, three inches by four and a quarter. And then one piece that is two by three and a quarter, okay? So what I like to do just to kind of keep everything straight for myself, so these bigger basic white pieces are gonna end up layering on top of our coastal cabana pieces. So I like to kind of keep those together, layer them on top of each other and put them aside. And then the smaller basic white is gonna layer on top of our um, Bermuda Bay piece. So I'm going to group those together as well and then keep my strips with them so that I don't um, lose them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold my card on the score line and use my bone folder to burnish the edges here. And I'm actually going to do um, my stamping first. In the video where I watched um, Dawn Griffith, her examples, she did kind of like her assembly and then stamping, but um, I like to do the stamping first and kind of do that and get it done and then we can kind of assemble these layers and then assemble the card. For me, it's just a little bit easier to stamp first. So looking at our example here, I'm going to stamp this piece first, okay? So we're going to grab one of our bigger basic white pieces and we're going to stamp our little zebra, okay? Grab our Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I have that zebra that is, looks like he's kind of dancing, jumping through the air. I'm gonna ink him up really good. And stamp. Remember, apply even pressure straight up and down, and we're good. And then I need to grab my ground. And use that here. So the one that looks like a little squiggle, the ground piece there. And I'm going to just stamp probably about three lines. And if they overlap a little bit, it's not a big deal because it's, it's all going to blend in like it's supposed to, which is good. Okay, now we're going to do his little hat. I love this stamp set because it's so quick and easy. You just stamp and go. You don't have to color anything if you don't want to. And then um, 
my son actually he likes the stamp set a lot too and he has ended up like anytime he makes a card for anybody he grabs this set so I was telling the girls at my classes you know a lot of times as a demonstrator I do sell off my um, stamp sets when they retire but this one I will not just because it's been so loved by my son <laughs> So in this little top section here, I actually wanted to put my sentiment kind of crooked. I liked how that looked there, okay? And so now that we've stamped that piece, we can go ahead and adhere it to our um, Coastal Cabana piece. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of seal and I'm going to apply that to the back. And I just like to, to apply them to the background layers of these white pieces after I stamp them just so I can keep all my pieces together because there are a few more pieces in here than maybe we normally use. So I like to adhere them as I go just to kind of keep them together so I know what goes where. Okay, so now for more stamping, this other large white piece, we're just gonna stamp happy birthday on there. So let me clean this stamp off real quick and I will stamp I will grab my other stamp so we're gonna grab the happy birthday and stamp that you stamp it just a little bit down from the top it's probably gonna show through a little bit but that's not a huge deal so there just like that and then that's all we have to do for the other large piece. So we're going to go ahead and adhere that to our other Coastal Cabana background. Okay. Let's try to make sure I have it even here. Perfect. Okay. And now our last little bit of stamping on the white pieces is this little zebra with the party animal there. So I'm actually gonna bring in a piece of scrap paper because um, this zebra is gonna get stamped off a little bit so I don't wanna stamp him on my background there. So we're gonna grab the zebra that looks like he's kinda talking to somebody and we're gonna stamp him next. We're just gonna stamp him because as you notice in the example, we need a little room for the hat and the sentiment. Oh, actually, that was something that I um, told my ladies in class. If you stamp the sentiment first, that's actually a little bit better because then you know um, you have room. You can kind of center it around the zebra. So it's actually better to stamp the sentiment first. So let's do that. We'll do the you party animal, and then we can kind of use that to position our zebra. All right, forgot about that little tip. So his butt and tail are gonna be stamped off just a little bit, but I'm gonna stamp him so that where the hat, where his hair meets his forehead kind of butts up in that corner with the L, that's how I'm gonna line him up here. Okay, and then he also gets a party hat. This whole card is a party. And it's funny because some of the ladies, their hat was up a little bit, um, especially on this one. Like when they stamped, it had a little bit of space in between, but I thought that was perfect because it looked like as he's jumping, his hat's kind of like flying off of his head. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute. So I just love this set. It just is so adorable and like I said I will definitely be keeping this um, for a while my son always you know when he makes these cards for people he always grabs this set he loves it too it's just so versatile and so easy I love it okay so now if you feel brave enough our last little bit of stamping are these stars around the border you could do this in Versamark. I'm doing it in um, Bermuda Bay ink on Bermuda Bay cardstock just because I like, I feel like it's a little bit deeper color when you do 
the tone on tone, um, but you could do it in Versamark as well. But for me, I've noticed it just doesn't show up as well. So, but I will say, as you'll notice, these ink pads are very juicy. So more than likely you're going to get ink around your, um, the edge of your stamp. So I recommend if you want to try it, definitely do it, but do it very lightly so that you don't get that ink mark around. But if for some reason you mess up a bunch and you go, oh, I don't like that, no big deal. All you have to do is flip your card over and put the ink spot in the middle and then just leave it plain. So that's what, um, I actually had a lady who did that. She wanted to try it, but um, she didn't really like how it came out. So um, I just told her, flip your card over and then she just left it blank and all those imperfections were hidden um, when she did that. So like I said, you can try it and then that's just how you fix it if for some reason it doesn't come out, like if it doesn't stamp all the way or you get that ink spot. But if you just do it really lightly, lightly tap, lightly stamp, because with that ink around the edge of the stamp, if you um, press down real hard, then that ink is going to transfer onto your card. So you just have to do it really light touch and see even mine, some of them didn't stamp all the way, but that's okay. Like we always say, it's homemade. Okay, but I, so I just angled it all the way the, around the edge of the card. It's gonna get, the middle is gonna get filled in with our stamped um, images, our stamped layers. So that's why I just did the border, okay? But like I said, you can try it, and if for some reason you don't like it, it's not a problem, just flip it to the inside. But mine turned out okay, so I'm gonna, I like how it came out. Okay, now to, for the assembly. So these little strips, we are going to take a pencil and you're going to line this strip up along the bottom edge here towards the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just the general centered area and make a pencil mark, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing towards the top. And remember, for this card where that crease is, that is the bottom of your card. The opening, because it's slider, the opening is at the top of the card here. Okay, and then this strip at the top of the card as well, draw a pencil mark, center it, and draw a pencil mark. So now you have two pencil marks. They may not be perfect, that's okay, this is just a general guide that we're gonna use, okay? So now we're gonna grab our classic label punch. This is also retiring. If you don't have this, I highly, highly recommend getting one of these. Um, I've seen so many great 3D projects and uh, that use this and um, it also coordinates with those um, itty bitty greetings that are retiring as well. There's just so many great versatile uses for this punch. Um, it is on sale. Uh, so I would highly recommend getting it before it goes away, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper and we are going to push it all the way down to the bottom of the punch here, okay? And then you're gonna look in your track, look for that pencil mark and you can see it right there. And I'm just gonna move my point over so it lines up with that pencil mark and punch. And then I'm gonna move it down to the left side where my other, we can see our pencil mark down here, right? See your pencil mark there. Slide it over, make sure it's all the way down in the punch, your paper's all the way down. Find that pencil mark, move it over, and punch. And this is what makes the track for the slider. So now we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. We're gonna push our paper all the way down in our punch Find that pencil mark, you see it right there, and we're just gonna slide it over until it's about where that point is on our punch and punch. Move it down to the left, you see your pencil mark there again. Line that point up about where it is, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close, and punch, okay? And now we have our slider traps, okay, perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our little pieces here and we are going to put one behind uh, the track here. So you want to line the bottom edge of it about where your pencil mark is, okay? Just 
roughly. And then we're just gonna hold it closed there. And we're gonna grab, you need mini dimensionals, not the regular size ones, the mini, the mini ones, okay? And then grab a mini dimensional and in the center of that track from the top to the bottom, the center there, you're gonna put a dimensional in each one. And then we're gonna take the backing off and we're gonna take our other strip and we're gonna lay it on top there. And I just lined it up with that pencil mark right there, okay? So now you have, this is your slider mechanism and it is very, <laughs> it is very twisty. I know a lot of the girls in class were like, oh my gosh, is it supposed to do that? Yes, it is. It's gonna stabilize in a few steps, but for now it is gonna be a little kind of wobbly. That's okay. I promise it will all come out in the end, okay? Oh, the other thing we need to do actually, before we go any further, we need to take our two inch circle punch, again, this is another item that's retiring, so make sure to get this if you don't have it already. And we're gonna make the little notch towards the top, um, center it between the left and right sides here, and make a little moon shape. And then we're gonna take our pencil, we're closing our card, taking our pencil, oops, and drawing around on the back side here so that we know where to punch for the back side. And we're just gonna line that up. And we're just doing this because, I mean, you could try to punch through two sheets of paper, but I wouldn't recommend it. And now we have our little opening where when we have our slider, you're gonna be able to see that opening there, okay? All right, so now what we wanna do is we are going to take uh, the happy birthday piece, okay? This is gonna go behind the card. It's gonna end up being lined up with this top edge here. And you'll notice at the bottom, it doesn't completely cover that slider. So what I recommend doing is just putting a tiny bit of, he of adhesive at the top part of this slider here. If you're looking at it like this, it's the bottom part. But this little section right here is where we're gonna put adhesive. We don't wanna put it down here because the card is not gonna completely cover it. And if you put adhesive here and go to close your card, it's not gonna slide up and down like you want it to, okay? So you can use glue or tear and tape or I'm using seal. I'm just gonna put a little strip at the top here. Make sure I have it all the way across. So make sure that this little slider piece is even. I'm gonna make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So, with your slider, this is, the, this is the, it, the inside of the slider, okay? With this all the way down at the bottom, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Take this piece and line it up in the center with the edge of the card, okay? And once you have that lined up, then adhere it down to your slider right there, okay? So now, it's all lined up. It's still a little wonky, but that's okay. We're gonna make sure, we're gonna pull this slider up and make sure that this part's even, and then we're gonna adhere all over the front now. Make sure there's adhesive, because it is gonna completely be covered. And we're gonna take our little zebra, and I'm just kind of centering it below the happy birthday, but making sure that it covers my slider and that it's centered in between my little slider piece here, okay? And I am gonna adhere it like that, okay? So now you have those pieces adhered, which is perfect. So now we're gonna stabilize our card a little bit more with some tear and tape. So what you wanna do is you just wanna put a little piece on the very edge of the two sides, not in the middle here because that's gonna close your card together. You want just the left and the right side. You want some tear and tape, okay? And be careful when removing your tear and tape because if you remove it, and this middle piece moves, it could stick to your tear and tape. So 
be very aware of where this middle piece is when you're removing your tear and tape. Try not to let it move because I actually had a lady yesterday who she removed this piece and her slider, because they're still not really stabilized, it moved and stuck to her tear and tape. So you have to be really careful. Try to keep this slider piece in the middle still while you're removing your tear and tape backing so that doesn't happen. Okay, I'm gonna use my little spatula. I love this thing for removing tear and tape. I just kind of stick it under the edge of my tear and tape and pull it away. And again, I'm just gonna use my hand to hold this in place so that it doesn't accidentally fall on my tear and tape, okay? And then just keeping this part away from the tear and tape, and then you're gonna pull the back of the card forward and lay it down on that tear and tape and then use your fingers to secure the tear and tape on the edges there so you have those crisp edges. And now, it stabilizes that slider, isn't that great? Oh, I love it. Okay, now we're gonna cover up these little uglies here. It's okay, it's supposed to look like that right now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mini dimensionals and we're gonna put them at the very corner of the card. The card that we're using is that front piece, the zebras. The zebra with the time to celebrate, okay? And the reason you use mini dimensionals on here as well and not regular dimensionals is because if you use regular dimensionals, they're so big that they're gonna hinder this um, middle sliding piece that's, hi that's hiding behind it. It's gonna keep it from being able to be pulled up. So you have to use mini dimensionals still. And what I'm doing is I'm just centering it between this little opening, the little oval opening, and the bottom of the card, okay? And the left and the right. So you just center it between all that stuff. And by doing this, it hides your little imperfections and that little zebra is still gonna be able to poke through. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh. Okay, so the final thing we're gonna do now is I'm just using a little hole punch that I had from a craft store and I'm gonna punch a hole towards the top here and then I'm gonna take, um, this is the glittered organdy ribbon that's black with the little glitter specks. I love this so much. So we're gonna take maybe, I don't know, maybe a six inch piece. I think six inches will do it. So I'm gonna cut a six inch piece of this ribbon. I know the girls at class kept asking me, what size do I need? And I was like, oh, I don't know, I didn't measure. So six inches, girls, if that's what, if you wanna measure your ribbon, six inches. Okay, so to stick your ribbon through, um, I'm just gonna take, this is my little scoring stylus from the Simply Scored. If you don't have this, but you have your take your pick tool, the take your pick tool comes with a little scoring attachment that you can put in here as well, and you can use that. I just wanted something that didn't have a point to it because I didn't want my ribbon to have a hole in it. So I'm just gonna loop my ribbon in half and put the edge of the loop um, where my hole is, and I'm gonna stick it through that way. And try to get my ribbon actually sorry not that way not the loop the edges of the ribbon you want to put I'm gonna put the edges of the ribbon where this hole is and thread them through if you have nails this usually works better but there so now we have our loop in the front right and we took our edges and threaded it through the back and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this little loop in the front and you're gonna take your edges and you're gonna pull it through this loop towards the front of the card. You could tie a bow if that's easier for you, that's fine. But this is an easy way and I really like that. So there, so now we have a little bit of excess and I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim at an angle. I'm gonna trim a little bit off there. And that's it, that is the double slider card. Really not too complicated, like I said. Um, 
once you get the mechanics down. And I tried to go slowly, step by step, so hopefully that'll help you as well. So what do you think? I hope you like it. I really would love to know what you think in the comments. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, leave a comment below. If you're watching it on my blog, I'd love to hear a comment on my blog post as well. Remember, um, if you need any of the supplies for these, especially the retiring supplies, as a review, the retiring supplies in this project are this two inch circle punch, the classic label punch, which this one is on sale, I know for sure, and the zany zebra stamp set is retiring as well so those three items from this project are retiring if you need any of those items please shop with me um, in my stampin up store and um, don't forget to use my april host code and you can earn the opal rounds for free if your order is 50 dollars or more before shipping and tax all right guys well thank you so much for joining me today i really hope you enjoy this and that you'll give it a shot um, if you have any questions, you can always email me at stampcampwithjen at gmail.com or call or text me at 240-578-5644. All right, guys, be safe and happy stamping, and I'll see you soon. Bye.